president of the University of Pittsburgh College Democrats. He supports Hillary Clinton, and we have Scott Myers. He's co-president of the University of New Hampshire College Republicans. He supports Donald Trump. Guys, great to have you here. Good morning, Allison. Nice to be with you. Kevin, let me start with you. You supported Bernie Sanders, but now you say you're 100% behind Hillary Clinton. So what do you say to your friends and fellow millennials and students who are having trouble making that shift? Yeah, I think you should definitely look at Hillary Clinton's plan on college affordability and student debt. You just met, like, played that clip of Bernie Sanders talking about so many people being saddled with student debt. With Hillary Clinton's plan, I know that I won't be saddled with student debt for the rest of my life, and she has an actual plan to combat student debt and make sure the college is affordable for the middle class and for everybody. Okay, Scott, to you, what is it that Donald Trump would do for millennials? I think Donald Trump, what Donald Trump does for millennials is give them a new look into what Washington can be. I think Donald Trump is not the establishment candidate. I think Donald Trump gives a brand new look to what millennials want. Millennials want something done. And things in Washington haven't been good. That nothing has been getting done. Yeah. I think with Donald Trump and with his charisma and with what he can do, he can get things done. But let me stick with you, Scott, such as, I mean, what, what do you think is your biggest issue? In regards to education, in regards to the economy. I mean, when you say that issue, millennials though. want something done, what does that mean? What, what do you want done? I want, to, I want him to be able to get the economy going again, which I think he can, because I'm a senior in college, and as a senior in college, I plan every single day to get to better my future and get ready for the real world. And I think that when I get into the real world, Donald Trump is going to give me the best opportunity to find a job in the economy. Okay, so the economy. Kevin, what do you think is millennials' biggest issue? Is it college affordability? Yeah, I think definitely it is college affordability. You have so many people that are stuck with 20 or 30 years of student debt right as they graduate from college. I know I want to be starting saving for my retirement once I leave college. I don't want to be stuck with student debt for so long. So, yeah, I think it's definitely making sure college is affordable so we all have uh, good opportunities coming out of college and that we're not saddled with student debt. Okay, so here's Hillary Clinton trying to make an appeal to you guys and particularly to people like you, Kevin, who had supported Bernie Sanders. Listen to this. You know, Bernie's campaign energized so many young people, and there is no group of Americans who have more at stake in this election than young Americans. Because so much of what will happen will affect your lives, your jobs, the kind of country we are, the kind of future. We want to build together. So, Kevin, did that fire up the crowd the way that Bernie Sanders used to? Yeah, it, it may have. I think that, really, she just wants to make sure everyone knows the importance of voting, not just in the presidential election, but in every single ballot, every single race. Everything has an importance when it comes to all the races. Mm -hmm. So I think she just wants to make sure everyone is out there to vote. Hey, Scott, how did you think Donald Trump did in the debate this week? I think that in the very beginning of the debate, he did a very good job. However, if you're asking me who I think won the debate, I think, to be honest with you, I think America lost and the media won. The media got what they wanted. They got two candidates that fought back and forth. Neither candidate told us why we should vote for them. And they always, all they did was argue about why you shouldn't vote for the other candidate. So, to be honest with you, I think the media got what they wanted and the American people lost, but I think especially in the first half hour, we're going to vote Trump. Scott, I don't like your depiction of the media as blood-hungry, blood-thirsty. We, we actually want, <laughs> we want real information as well, Scott. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> should reframe your talking point on that one. But listen, guys, I do want to ask you about Gary Johnson, okay? Because we keep hearing that millennials are drawn to this third-party candidate, and you guys are looking for something different. I don't know if either of you saw Gary Johnson was on television yesterday, and he could not name his favorite foreign leader or one that he respected. Let me show you this moment very quickly. Can name a foreign leader that you respect. I guess I'm having an Aleppo moment in the former former president. But I'm giving of Mexico. you the whole world. I, I know, I know. Anybody I know. in the world you like, anybody, pick any leader. 
the former president of Mexico. Which one? I'm, I'm having a brain. I'm well, having name any box. So D box. Now, who's your favorite farm leader? Get him off the hook. Name a farm leader. He was, he was terrific. Any farm leader? Ah, uh, Merkel. Okay, Merkel. Okay, fine. Take your seat. Can't argue with that. Kevin, does this scare millennials that he can't name a farm leader? policies of the Republican Party. I think they know that LGBT people should have human rights like the rest of us. They know that the war on drugs has been a complete failure, yeah. and that's why they're attracted to someone like him. But I think that moments like this show that Gary Johnson is not prepared to be the President of the United States. All right, we're going to leave it there. Kevin Burke, Scott Myers, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate letting us uh, take your pulse on where you millennials are today. Let's get over to...